as a military surgeon and military neurosurgeon, I've been very interested in blast injury to the brain and its effects. And this is having a major societal impact, uh, particularly in the Western countries where their soldiers have been exposed to blast. There's a lot of controversy around post-traumatic stress disorder and its relationship to mild traumatic brain injury and blast exposure. There's a lot of interest in whether multiple mild blast exposures lead to chronic traumatic encephalopathy, which is uh, like an early dementia. And so we've addressed these issues in a major review for Lancet Neurology. And I've taken on board authors from other parts of Australia, particularly Sandy McFarlane, who's a, 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 a psychiatrist who, who's an expert in post-traumatic stress disorder and a military psychiatrist. I've taken on board uh, researchers from the United States, particularly Jeff Ling, who's an academic neuro military neurologist, and also um, Jamie Grimes, who's a who's now just become head of neurology at the uh, Uniformed Services University in Bethesda. Peter Bragg works at the National Trauma Research Institute here and is an, evident, is an expert on, on evaluating evidence in the literature and he's helped me with the literature review and, and putting all this together we've got a very strong current review on the effects of uh, blast, bomb blast on, tr on uh, brain, the brain uh, particularly in relation to mild traumatic brain injury, but covering the whole spectrum of brain injury. Tries to answer the, the con controversial questions around the effects of blast on, on the brain, blast, bomb blast on the brain. I've sifted through hundreds of articles to write this review with my co-authors, co, um, and it's very difficult to, to, uh, to draw the whole field together because it's so disparate and there are so many experts who've written and done research in this area. So what we've tried to do is to draw it all together and to bring out the main points and to answer some of the controversies based on the current literature that's available. I think it, you know, it raises uh, further questions about the effects of bomb blast on the brain and it will, it will help um, crystallise people's thoughts on, on what the major questions are that, that need to be answered. About, about this very challenging field. It will lead to research on how bomb blast actually damages the brain, what are the pathological effects of the, of the bomb blast, what are the unique pathological effects, how do they work, how do they manifest in terms of the clinical effects of the bomb blast, what, what, what in bomb blast actually predisposes people to, to emotional disorders and post-traumatic stress, di stress disorder and depression. If it, if it does, uh, what does, what actually in the bomb blast actually causes that, which is different from other types of mild traumatic brain injury, and what are the effects of multiple uh, traumatic uh, brain injuries of the mild variety on the brain in the longer term? We need to answer that question. We also need to look at better ways of diagnosing traumatic brain injury. And what we've brought up in the article is some of the new advances in magnetic resonance imaging and also biomarkers, actually being able to take a serum sample from a finger prick to say someone has actually suffered a mild traumatic brain injury.